Hi, I'm Brett with Artisanal Foods. Today we're going to be learning to make fresh pasta, and we have a very special guest with us today, Kai and Marilyn Monroe. Okay. I'm excited. Have you made pasta before? No, have you? I have. No. All right, well, we're going to make it from scratch. Do you want to learn to uh, separate eggs? Yeah, you want to each grab one? Crack it, let the whites fall here. Take the yolk, and put it in there. Oh. We'll need all 12 of those. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Sorry. Oops. <laughs> <I'm here. laughs> Just try to pass the yolk back and forth between the halves. So why do we separate the whites and the yolk? So the, the whites uh, are mostly water and protein, and the, the yolks are mostly fat, so they're going to give a nice color and flavor to the uh, pasta. You're welcome to wash your hands here. We have a farm in northern town, Namagosa. We're trying to make a perfect chicken egg. We're the only farm in the U.S. not feeding corn or soybean. It's certified organic. What's happening back here? Starting some water boiling for our pasta. So we've got about three quarters of a cup. We double however much we have in egg yolk, we'll use twice as much flour. And so we're doing half uh, white flour, which is a double zero, really fine uh, grind. And then this is durum, which is going to give a little bit more flavor and color. So we have flour from uh, Central Milling in Utah. That's Utah's oldest company. They've been around since the mid-1800s, and it's one of the best flour uh, mills in the United States. I'm just going to mix those together here. Marilyn, you can help me over here. 
So we'll put this on first its most wide setting. yolks and flour. Just that's all that this is? Yep. And um, I'm going to put this on a thinner setting, you know. And you can roll through the okay. there we go. Yep. You got it. Sometimes it's good to adjust this if it's a little wet. You can put some flour there. Oh! A crispy. Can you go too fast, Jesse? No, you can't. Yeah. They make lasagna from this one. Because <laughs> it's roughly on the side? I was just saying it's a nice wide noodle. Nice, nice wide noodle. <laughs> there we go. This is fun. Uh, it should center itself. Fresh pasta for Joe DiMaggio at one point? Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping to try. Yeah, okay. I want to learn how to do it so I can, so I can do it. Excellent. Yeah, you put that on I was saying. Considering my dough is looking questionable, this is actually working pretty well. Oh, yours is rouge. Can you make just about any pasta with this? Yeah, this is the base. Uh, okay. So then really the different names of pasta get is just based on the shape with, with right. the noodle. So like ravioli? Yeah, we can make ravioli out of this. That's a tough one. It is? It's a lot of work. It looks like little pockets, do you think? Mm -hmm. You can imagine having to make each one of those. Uh, it's better to have a machine. <laughs> Are they ravioli machine? They're very fancy. Only uh, for commercial use. I've never seen a home ravioli. Is the machine just called a ravioli or is it like oh. a ravioli or? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next step, um, we're gonna make this into noodles and you really wanna choose the width uh, basically depending on the pasta sauce you're making. So if it's a really thin and runny sauce, you're gonna want a thin noodle so it can can act like a wick and hold on to the sauce. If it's a thicker, chunky sauce, we're gonna do a tomato sauce, so it's gonna hold basically on any size noodle. I'm gonna go with a fettuccine with. Um, but also, in case you don't have one of these at home and you just roll it out using a rolling pin, you can cut one, it's very easy. Slide the noodle. You can take the pasta and roll it up loosely with flour so it's not going to stick on itself. And then, then you can just cut it into whatever size noodle you like. And then, hopefully, so you can, you can do this even with no machinery. Fine, 
the red will too. So, it's good to just kind of fluff it up a little bit so it doesn't stick on itself, but because my dough is a little on the dry side, it's not sticking at all. I'm a professional painter. That's a sad looking noodle. Oh. Oh, it's oh. a big one. It's like a puffer yeah. deli. What did you say? It's a sour puffer deli, but it's that, that oh. one. <laughs> <laughs> So you can see this great color, and that's all from our egg yolks. A little bit of the color is coming from the durum flour. But, uh, so this is ready to go. This is fresh pasta. That's how it feels, huh? So back on the stove, I have water that's boiling. It's uh, already pre-seasoned with salt. And um, then we'll start making a little bit of sauce. What do you have there? Yeah. This isn't dry. That's okay. It's it's fresh pasta. You want to dry it first? Don't, isn't that how you? Oh well, like like the pasta you're used to in the store. You know, it's it's okay. You really uh, this will be all right as is. Uh, it's gonna get wet when we cook it, so uh, no need to dry it out. Oh. <laughs> but good idea. Yeah, good, good thinking. I guess I'm just uh, <laughs> inexpensive taste or something. <laughs> So if you don't have time to make great pasta sauce, we do keep some in our store. This is a really nice one called Tower Mina. It's organic and they're using the San Marzano tomatoes, which are the best tomatoes. And uh, yes, I thought you might want to have a taste of it. Oh, I thought you were going to pour it right on the table. You can add some fresh tomatoes or something if you like, or you want to change it to your liking. One, I just had some uh, Bombles peppers. Peppers! Now we're ready to add our pasta and cook that. It's going to cook really quickly. Because it's already soft. Right, it's already hydrated, so... Ooh! Is these in the water? I had just put uh, salt in the water. And then you saw earlier I was grating some Parmigiano Reggiano, which would be nice. Do you want to taste it? Just a little pasta now. <laughs> How worth it? Let's see, we'll need a it bowl. Like nothing. It tastes like flour. Oh, it has a 